Hey everyone, this is David Brown from Lyco Birds, and in this video I want to talk about a recent pelagic birding trip that I did. This was a six hour winter pelagic birding trip out of Lewis, Delaware. It was run by Hillstar Nature, and the boat we were on was the Thelma Dale 5 out of Fisherman's Wharf, Lewis, Delaware. The trip was originally scheduled for January 21st, 2023, but because of rough seas, they postponed it until the next day, January 22nd. The trip was scheduled to depart at 8 a.m., so we all had to be there by 7.30 a.m., just so they could make sure everyone was there and give us an introductory talk. Here we see the three leaders of the trip. In the middle here in blue is Zach Baer. He was the main leader of the trip. We have Holly Merker and Mikey Luttmerding. They gave an introductory talk, just explaining a few things, and then we boarded the boat in the order that we signed up for the trip and paid. Here's a photo from the trip that gives you maybe an idea of the size of the boat. It's a 95-foot boat, and we're on the upper deck here. So in addition to this, there's a lower deck that goes all the way around the boat. So it's, it's a fairly good size uh, boat, and we had really calm seas, so um, seasickness wasn't an issue on this trip. Here's a bird that we knew to be on the lookout for. This is a king eider that's been hanging out in Roosevelt Inlet. So uh, we knew we'd be going right through where it's been hanging out, and it put on a pretty good show for us. As the boat went by, the eider actually flushed and flew a complete circle around the boat, allowing for pretty good photos. After that, we worked our way out onto the actual ocean. And this only being a six-hour trip, it was more of a near-shore pelagic I think the plan was to get maybe about 15 miles offshore at the deepest. So what we did was go out a little bit, and then we paralleled the coast going south in somewhat shallower waters. And then we worked our way out a little bit farther and then came back north before coming back in. So as we worked out, uh, we were seeing a lot of red-throated loons, such as this one. Here's a harbor seal, and when they're in the water, you just see their heads sticking up like this. But later in the trip, we got to see them actually um, out on the rocks and see how big they are, so stay tuned for those photos. Here's a poor photo of a horned grebe in flight, but it's a species you don't get to see in flight too often, so kind of fun. Here we have a male surf scoter, and we did see all three expected scoter species on this trip. Here's the smallest gall we were expecting to see on the trip, which is Bonaparte's gall. The one reason that people do these winter pelagic trips is trying to see different alcid species. And unfortunately, with this being a nearshore trip, we only had one alcid species, which was razor bale. And you'll see I have many photos of them throughout this presentation. And we got great looks at northern gannets, which is another thing that's uh, really something that makes these offshore boat trips kind of special. Here we have the bridge over the Indian River Inlet with a red-throated loon flying here. And the day before, I had actually been down in this area birding. Um, it's a really good birding spot on the south side of the inlet. Here we have three more razor bills. And I'm not going to pretend to be an expert by any means on winter alcids, but you can see kind of the blunt shape of the bills and also how the white underwing contrasts um, or it's white underwing and a white body compared to some of the other alcid species which have a dark underwing contrasting with the white body. Here's another razor bill that gives a really good look at the shape of that bill compared to other species we might look for such as common myrrh which have more of kind of a standard thin bill. Here we have a flock of white winged scoters and of course they get their name from the white patches on the secondaries of the wing, whereas surf scoters and black scoters just have dark wings. They don't have white patches. So here we have a black scoter. You can see the dark wings and the orange in front of the, uh, or behind the bill there. Here we have a common loon. And the one interesting thing that was pointed out on this trip is that when we were closer to shore, we were seeing a lot of red-throated loons. But as you get out farther, you see more common loons. And... The explanation was something like red-throated loons aren't able to dive as deep and feed as deep as the common loon, so they end up sticking closer to shore, whereas common loons you can see quite far out on the ocean. Here we have a great black-backed gall coming in, the largest gall species in the world, and you can see those contrasting underwings that have the white and then a lot of dark, sort of a two-toned look. Here's another look at a great black-backed gall. Another distinctive feature of them is this uh, 
fairly large bill and this uh, kind of really droops down in this area, the gonies. And uh, great black back gulls also have very clean heads in the winter. That's one way you can distinguish them from lesser black back gull, which usually has quite a bit of streaking on the head in the winter. And here's a couple more great black back galls. And what they do on trips like this is they chum. So they have little bits of fish that are chopped up that they throw off the back of the boat. And they try to attract galls and gannets and things like that to come in. And I think other species see that um, the galls are feeding and more galls come in. Uh, overall, it wasn't super successful on this trip, especially when we were farther out. As we were coming back in towards shore and there were more galls around, it was a little bit more successful. But um, overall, we didn't have tons of galls following the boat for most of the trip. On these trips, you don't just see birds. We also see mammals, so here we have some common dolphins. Here's another razor bill, and again, look for that blunt bill and white underwings. And the leaders were also talking about something about the overall proportions of where the wings are and how that balances out the shape and how long the tail is versus the feet, um, which I'm sure are good field marks if you have more experience, but um, these are species I don't get to see very often, so it's kind of hard to... Um, to get a feel for those sort of things when you don't have much direct experience with them. Here's another Bonaparte's gall. Here's a group of seven razor bills, and this was the largest group that we saw the whole day. Another razor bill. Here's another razor bill. And one species that we didn't see, but I was hoping we would see, is dovekey, which compared to this would be even smaller and would have a really small bill. And another razor bill. So you can see we had a, a fair number of razor bill, and I was shooting with a 400 millimeter lens. Um, some people had bigger lenses, but really, when you're on a rocking boat, it can be uh, quite difficult, even with just a lens the size I had. Here we have a flock of black scoters, which might be hard to make out, but if you get a closer look, you can see the orange behind the bill on the males and the, the female facial pattern. We had a really good look at this razor bill that was sitting on the water. And as the boat got closer, it, the bird flushed, so we got to see how it takes off out of the water. This kind of reminds me of those old photos you see of these really huge sea planes. But finally, it broke free of the water and got lift off. And this was probably the best photo opportunity of the whole day for a razor bill. And one pattern that's neat to notice this close is this little bit of white on the trailing edge of the wing. Here we have an immature northern gannet and the underside of what I believe is the same bird. And as we were heading back in towards shore, someone noticed spray uh, from a whale. So we worked over that way, and we had two or three humpback whales. So you can see it here. And when you're identifying whales, a lot of times you're going off of things like the shape and size of the fin here, um, something that I don't have a lot of experience with other than you know doing pelagic trips every couple of years. Um, but there's a, some people who get really into learning how to identify all of the different whales and dolphins and everything. And this was about all we saw of the humpback whales. We never got to see the tail stick up. We never really got to see more of the body than this. And I think they were in fairly shallow water, so they weren't able to like really dive down and stick their tail up in the air. And then we came up on what was my favorite part of the trip, which was checking out the icebreakers. So these are structures that are offshore. Um, so this was a lighthouse that is connected to this big rock wall that just had tons of galls sitting on it. And then there's some smaller standalone structures where it's basically a bunch of rocks dumped together. And uh, that's where we saw a lot of seals and cormorants. Here's a good comparison photo for galls. So if we look at the four galls that we can see the whole thing and number them one, two, three, and four. Number one and number four are both great black-backed galls. You can see how dark their back is. And just the larger size. Number two is a herring gall. You see that lighter kind of typical gray color you might be used to seeing from ring-billed galls and herring galls. Similar shade and it's uh, quite a bit smaller than the great black back galls. And then bird number three we can see looks a little bit skinnier than the uh, herring gall. Maybe slightly smaller overall um, but kind of a less bulky shape to it. Maybe a little bit more elongated looking. And the color of the back and the wings here is kind of intermediate between the herring gall and the great black backed. Although with the light that we had, it's maybe not as obvious. Um, but this is a lesser black backed gall. 
And you can see what I mentioned earlier, that the great black back galls have a really clean head, whereas the lesser black back galls have quite a bit of streaking. So sometimes if you see that darker back and you're not sure, is that a greater, is that a great black backed or a lesser black backed, you can look at the streaking on the head to see um, which of them it is in the winter. We also had some brant, which are a species of small goose. Here's another lesser black-backed gall, and we had quite a few of them. This is a species that um, has been increasing over the past number of years, um, more of a European species, I guess. Um, but the one thing that sticks out on them is they have yellow legs compared to the more pinkish legs of herring galls or great black-backed galls. And also on the rocks of the icebreaker, we had some ruddy turnstones. And there were also some purple sandpipers, although I wasn't able to get photos of those. We had two different species of seals. So these are gray seals, and I like this photo because it looks like they're in love. Here we have double-crested cormorants, and you can see the, um, the ones that are dark all over are the adults, and then the ones with a lot of white are the immatures. And here we have a mixed group of cormorants. So down at the bottom here, these are double-crested, and up top, we have a number of great cormorants. And the one thing that stands out on those are they have kind of a white patch on the cheek behind the bill. And we'll get a closer look at that in some other photos. But they're larger than the double-crested cormorants as well. Here we have a harbor seal. So if you remember that photo at the beginning where you just have the face sticking out of the water, this is what the whole thing looks like. They're quite large. And I think their eyeballs look kind of funny. It's like something you would see out of a video game where the, uh, the black part of the eye just looks really oversized. And here's a closer look at a great cormorant. So here's what I was talking about with that uh, white cheek patch. And as we came back in towards Roosevelt Inlet, we had this bald eagle perched up on a sign. And coming back into the inlet, the king eider was still hanging around. And here's one more look at yours truly enjoying the high seas.